Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the Mattel WWE basic figures from series 114, or at least the figures I chose to get from this wave. I got Bray Wyatt as the Fiend and Rhea Ripley. You may wonder, why do you have two Fiends? Well, he makes for a great Joker henchman or thug in my Batman world. So let's check out the packaging here. As you can see, series 114, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. This is the first basic fiend they've made. We did get an elite fiend already on the back. Here's the rest of the wave. I chose to pass on the other three guys as in my action figure world, no close equals no buy. Here's the barcode of the fiend, if that helps anybody. And then we've got Rhea Ripley. This is the first figure for her they've made. It's the first time in the line, Rhea Ripley. She's a basic figure. There is an elite version of her coming in the very near future. On the back, here's the rest of the wave. Here's Ripley's barcode. So no further ado, let's crack them open. All right, now that we got these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. And that was kind of a joke, as these Mattel wrestling basic figures traditionally don't come with any accessories. But I'm gonna have to forget Mattel on this one, as these guys retail at less than $10. $9.99 a piece. How can you go wrong with a six and a half inch scale figure at that price? So in front of you, we have Bray Wyatt as the Fiend, and then we have Rhea Ripley. This is the first time they've made a figure of Rhea Ripley, although since then they've made an Elite figure. And this is the second time they made a Fiend figure. They had the Elite version first, then this basic version. There's another basic version with a jacket on, and then there's the Ultimate version as well. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We're going to look at their height and articulation. We'll compare them with some other comparable figures. And we'll look at the Fiend with some other Joker thugs. That is the main reason I got the Fiend and why I got more than one of them. He looks like a sick, deranged clown. Very twisted. One of the coolest things that WWE has going on for him right now. And he's going to fit in great with my wrestling collection and with my Batman collection. So... Let's go ahead and start off with the best, The Fiend. So let's start off by looking at Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt made his wrestling debut in 2009. He's part of the Wyatt family, which is a group of wrestlers in the WWE. He's most recently got a new identity as The Fiend. He's still Bray Wyatt, but he's a dark secret, and he's The Fiend, an evil incarnation. So let's take a look at him. As you can see, he's got that very creepy looking face. The mouth is open, exposed. You can see his teeth. That huge smile sunken in. The eyes are dark. He's got that white mask. It just looks so creepy. One side, you can see his ear exposed and the straps of the mask. Moving around, you can see his dreads hanging off the one side. This is a basic figure. It means it has a little bit less articulation, but it's cheaper than the elite figures. You can see the tattoos all over his arms and chest. For a 9.99 figure, they did a very nice job with the tattoos. Very clean. I don't see any smudges or anything to really complain about there. Got a black tank top on. Looks like a single jointed elbow, single jointed knee. The sort of red or purple and black striped pants. Going to be great for a Joker henchman. Overall, I'm liking him. He's not as good as the Elite version, but very nice nonetheless. And just like you saw earlier in the video, I did get two of these Fiend figures. Why? Because you can never have too many Joker thugs. This guy looks like a sick, deranged clown and will be perfect in my Batman collection working for the Joker. The more, the merrier. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at this figure, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's sitting at about 7.0 inches tall, which can translate to a hair under 18 centimeters. Now let's look at his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down, about that far, not too much. Can't really tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. No bicep cut. Single jointed elbow, goes in about this far. Does have rotation. His wrist here, it can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. His torso is one solid piece, no articulation there. Traditional waist swivel below that. He's got the old school T-crotch type hips. Before about that far, back about that far. 
single jointed knees, goes back about 90 degrees. Then he's got a boot cut for rotation with his foot. Here's Bray Wyatt in his Firefly Funhouse, entertaining children, but there's also a dark side to him. He's getting ready to share his secret. And as you can see, he's got his gloves on now. He's slowly transforming into The Fiend. At the time when this basic Fiend was released, there was only one other Fiend figure. That was the Elite Fiend. Drop me a line in the comments below. Tell me which one you like better. I'm sure most of you guys will pick the Elite version. I do notice the basic one is a little bit bigger and taller than the Elite Fiend. So let's check out the differences here. I do believe that they share the same head. His hair is a little more brown, a little darker, but I think it's the same sculpt. Going further down, the tattoo is a lot better here. You can see the actual coloring on the ink. This one's a little more faded and just simply black and flesh colored. You can see all the different coloring in here. They do both seem to have single jointed elbows. A little disappointed for an elite figure. This guy has an ab crunch here, whereas he does not. And going further down, he's got ball joints in his legs. He has just a T-crotch style. So, I mean, the Elite Fiend is definitely better, but the basic one is not bad. Look at this guy. Big, intimidating. Going to be a nice Joker henchman for me. And not too long after, they released another basic Fiend. This is from the WrestleMania series. It's 100% the same figure, except this one is going to have different arms with a jacket and the actual jacket on top. Beyond that, they are identical. And not too long later, they made an ultimate version of the Fiend. An ultimate figure is pretty much like an elite figure with even better articulation and way more accessories. This Fiend here had a bunch of different interchangeable parts. He had arms you could swap out so you could have him with a jacket on or the jacket off. He had a couple different heads, one with a tongue out and one not. Championship Fiend belt, all kind of cool stuff. This is definitely the best Fiend figure out there if you're looking just to get one. But I've got love for all the versions. And here are all the Fiend figures I have in my collection. I've got a total of eight of them. Army building at its finest. The Fiend is a very cool wrestling character. And it makes for even a better Joker thug in my Batman action figure collection. Of course, before he was the Fiend, he was simply Bray Wyatt. Here's this Fiend next to a bunch of different basic Bray Wyatt figures. Then, next to a bunch of elite Bray Wyatt figures. And here's my entire collection of Bray Wyatt figures. Getting to be pretty massive at this point. Bray Wyatt is a member of the Wyatt family. Originally, that consisted of Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan, and Luke Harper. Here are several of my Eric Rowan figures. Then, my Luke Harper figures. Rest in peace. This would be about how the original Wyatt family looked before they added additional members. The first one to join would be Braun Strowman, and then later Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. I mentioned using these fiends as Joker henchmen. Here's a couple of them attacking Batman under Joker's orders. Now let's check them out next to some other wrestling figures that could make some good Joker henchmen. Here he is with a bunch of different Mattel Doink the Clown figures. I got this Matt Hardy figure in a big lot of wrestling figures I bought a long time ago. I didn't get the lot for him, he was just an extra bonus. I thought with the green face and the purple hair, he could go good with my Joker gang. I should paint his lips red. A project for the future. Then there's this Mattel figure named Charlie Malice. He's got the white face paint and some tattoos on him. I threw him with my Joker gang as well. Now let's check out some Jack specific wrestling figures I have in my Joker gang. This is a Jeff Hardy figure. He's got the white face paint and I added some red lips for him. Then we have these Jack's Sting figures, especially the one on the left. That's when Sting was going through his sort of Joker phase. And here are a bunch of Jack's Doink the Clown figures. They're also my Joker army. And here are a bunch of painted wrestling figures that are my Joker gang. And now let's check them out next to some actual Joker Thug figures. Here's a couple of DC Direct Arkham City Joker Thugs. We have both the white version and the black version with the orange hair. Here they are next to DC Direct's Mime and Marionette. These are from Doomsday Clock and they work for some great Joker Thugs. 
they did work for Joker for a brief period of time in that story. Then, next to some Mattel Movie Master Joker thugs. And here, next to a couple more Mattel Movie Master Joker thugs. These are actually Joker in his bank robber getup, but I use them as Joker thugs in my action figure world. And here, next to a couple of Mafex Joker thugs. Then, next to Panda Man, he was a Joker thug from Suicide Squad. Here's Fiend in the wrestling ring, holding the Fiend championship belt. Now let's look at Rhea Ripley. She made her wrestling debut in 2013 and signed on with the WWE in 2017. This is the first figure of her they've made, and since then they've also made an elite version. So let's take a look at her. Starting with her head here. The face looks pretty good. Hair combed to one side. She's got some braids on the side, an earring, a little necklace. Pretty good detail for a basic figure. I think they did a great job with her hair. Going further down, her tank top says Ripley. Does have single jointed elbows, single jointed knees. Pretty basic looking figure. It's going to be using the same body they use for a ton of their females. But for nine bucks, how can you go wrong? Now that we've taken a look at the figure, now let's check out her height. From bottom to the top, she's sitting at about 6.4 inches tall, which can translate to a hair over 16 centimeters. Now let's check out her articulation. Starting with her head here, of course, it can rotate from side to side. She can look up and down about that much. Can tilt her head just the tiniest bit from side to side. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. Elbow has a single joint, less than 90 degree bend. Rotation as well. Her wrist can simply rotate around. Torso, it's one solid piece, no articulation. Traditional waist swivel below that. Legs on ball joints, pretty much completely does the splits. Then go forward about that far, back, pretty much not at all. No thigh cut. Single jointed knees here, they go back about that far. She's got a boot cut below that, and that is about it. Here she is, next to the elite version of Rhea Ripley. It is by far a superior figure, although they're both very nice figures. Now let's check them out, next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other wrestling figures. Here they are, next to some other Mattel basic wrestling figures. Then, next to some Mattel elite wrestling figures. And here, next to some female Mattel wrestling figures. Then, with some older Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are, next to some of the newer Jazzwares AW wrestling figures. Now let's check them out, next to some action figures from different various companies. To see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work my way smaller. Here they are, next to some DST, or Diamond Select toys. And here they are, next to some McFarlane toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, next to some NECA figures. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112th Cloth Soft Goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, standing with some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, here they are, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. Overall, these are some pretty cool figures especially for basic figures. I'm gonna get a ton of use out of the Fiend. Sure, he's not as good as the Elite or the Ultimate version, but $9 a piece? Come on. I got me some almost seven inch scale Joker thugs for nine bucks each. Two thumbs up, Mattel, thank you. And Rhea Ripley, she's also pretty cool for a basic wrestling figure. Nowhere near as good as her Elite version, but very happy, especially for the price. The value is there. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.